Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hanging Out with Mrs. Hammond. What a beautiful day it is, and a beautiful day to sit back and just listen and read. We are on chapter 11 in Matilda. I love this chapter. It's Bruce Bogtrotter and the Cake. And it was so ironic last night because I was sitting down and I was flipping through the channels and Matilda was on. I don't know if any of you guys watched it, but when I turned it on, they were actually right in the scene where we're going to be reading. And I was like, Mr. Hammond, come here, come here and watch this. And he did and he loved it. But uh, anyway, it was very ironic and I enjoyed it. Today, I have some people I want to thank. I remember I told you yesterday I want to start thanking people. And um, I have one person that I really, really want to uh, thank a lot. She's probably our biggest fan. Always leaves the most wonderful comments and is the most positive person I know. And her name is Mrs. Suzanne Jordan. And Mrs. Jordan, she's a wonderful teacher. And she and I have taught school together for a long, long time. And uh, now she is one of our interventionists and she teaches our dyslexia students, but she's awesome and she's very positive. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Because she is an awesome, great teacher. Um, another person that I would like to thank is a good friend of mine also. And I can't leave her out. She also has shared every video and she is very uh, positive with you guys and always there for you and that's Mrs. Lynn Burgess great teacher great uh, testing coordinator so she uh, also deserves to be thanked and one more today and then we have lots more people because every teacher staff member of Dangerfield Lone Star ISD should be thanked in person but I have one more that I want to mention today, and that is, well, Mrs. Reader is our, and I thank Mrs. Reader, I really do. She's our leader. But this person that I am talking about is Mrs. Reader's secretary, and her name is Mrs. Diane Rawls. Mrs. Rawls keeps us all in mind. And if you want to know anything, you call the school and ask Mrs. Rawls, and she can tell you. She can tell you where everyone is and what anyone is supposed to be doing she keeps us in line and i just don't know what we do without her thank you so much mrs raw so a big shout out today to mrs jordan mrs burgess and mrs rawls okay are you ready to read we have some vocabulary first of all of course the first word is rapier rapier means a long heavy sword and then we have carbuncle carbuncle is a red swollen bump you ever heard of that carbuncle a red swollen bump that might be on your skin somewhere and then we have patchoul doesn't look like patchoul, patchoul but it's a small blister or pimple on the skin similar to a carbuncle and then we have bemused. Bemused is confused or puzzled. So I'm so excited. Chapter 11, Bruce Bogtrotter and the cake. Oh, wonderful. How can she get away with it? Oh, excuse me. I forgot to even tell what we went through last yesterday. Oh my goodness, those two chapters and that Miss uh, Trunchbull, she, were, she was throwing kids everywhere. And they're, so today they're, they're thinking back and they're reflecting back on what happened yesterday and they're thinking, well, how could she get away with it? Lavender said to Matilda, surely the children go home and tell their mothers and their fathers. I mean, uh, I know that my father would just raise a terrific stink if I told him that the headmistress had grabbed me by the hair and slung me over the playground fence. No, oh, he wouldn't, Matilda said, and I'll tell you why. He simply wouldn't believe you. I mean, who would believe that? I mean, really, who would believe something like that? Well, 
He wouldn't, Matilda said, and the reason is obvious. Your story would sound too ridiculous to be believed. And that is the Trunch Bull's great secret. Probably is. Who would believe something like that? Well, what is Lavender said? Matilda said, never do anything by halves. If you want to get away with it, be outrageous. Go the whole hog. Make sure that everything you do is so completely crazy that it's unbelievable. My parent is going to believe this pigtail story. Not No parent is. Not in a million years they will not. And mine wouldn't. That'd call me a liar. Well, in that case, Lavender said Amanda's mother isn't going to cut her pigtails off. No, she isn't, Matilda said. Amanda will do it herself. You see if she doesn't. Do you think she's mad? Lavender asked. Who? The trunch bull. No, I don't think she's mad, Matilda said, but she's very dangerous. Being in the school is like being in a cage with a cobra. Hi, there's Mr. Hammond coming in. Being in this school is like being in a cage with a cobra. I mean, you have to be very fast on your feet. That's true. They got it. Another example of how dangerous this headmistress could be on the very next day. Well, during lunchtime, an announcement was made that the whole school should go into the assembly hall and be seated as soon as the meal was over. When all the 250 or so boys and girls were settled down in the assembly, the trunch bull marched onto the platform. And she was carrying a riding crop in the right hand. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, got it. Um, when all the 200 people were seated, she stood there on the center stage in her green breeches with her legs apart and riding crop in her hand, glaring at the set of unturned faces before her. What's going to happen, Lavender whispered. I don't know, Matilda whispered back. The whole school waited for what was coming next. Bruce Rob Trotter, the trunch bull barked suddenly. Where is Bruce Rob Trotter? Come up here, the trunch bull shouted, and look smart about it. I wouldn't have wanted to be Bruce Rob Trotter. Bog Trotter, an 11 year old boy who was decidedly large and round, and, and, and he stood up and he waddled briskly forward. He climbed up on the platform. Stand over there, the trunch bull ordered, pointing. The boy stood to one side and he looked very nervous. Oh, he knew very well that he wasn't up there to be presented with a prize. No. He was watching the headmistress with an exceedingly wary eye, and she kept edging farther and farther. He kept wedging farther and farther away from her. Little shuffles of his feet just go farther and farther away. Rather as a rat might edge away from a terrier that is watching it from across the room. His plump, flabby face had turned gray with fearful apprehension and his stockings hung about his ankles. This clot, boomed the headmistress, pointing the riding crop at him like a rapper. This black head, his foul carbuncle, this poisonous uh, postule that you see before you is none other than a disgusting criminal. Underworld, a member of the Mafia. Here's a picture. And uh, she's got this little boy up on this stage, and she's telling the whole student body these things. Now, who ever heard such? Well, I think, said Trunch Bull, I crook, I pirate, I brigand, I rustler. Steady on, the boy said. I mean, dash it all, headmistress. Do you deny it, you miserable little gumboil? Do you plead not guilty? Well, 
I don't know what you're talking about, the boy said more puzzled than ever. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You little blister! The crutch bull shouted yesterday morning during break. You sneaked like a serpent into the kitchen. And when you got in there, you stole a slice of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. That tray had been prepared for me personally by the cook. It was my morning snack. So you came in and you took it. And as far as the cake, it was mine. That was mine, boy. It was my morning snack. That was not your cake. And you don't think for one minute I'm going to eat that filth I give to you. That cake was made for real butter and real cream. And he, that robber bandit that Safe cracker, the highwayman standing over there with his socks around his ankles, stole it and ate it. Oh, she was mad. I never did, the boy explained, running bright and white. Don't you lie to me, bog dropper. Bark the trunch bull, the cook saw you. What's more, she saw you eating it. The trunch bull paused to wipe a fleck of froth from her lips. <laughs> when she spoke again, her voice suddenly was softer and quieter, more friendly, and she leaned toward the boy, smi uh, uh, smi boy smiling. You like my special chocolate cake, don't you, Bob Trotter? It's rich and delicious, isn't it, Bob Trotter? Very good, the boy mumbled. The words were out before he could stop himself. You're right, the trunch bull said. It is very good. Therefore, I think you should congratulate the cook. When a gentleman has a particularly good meal, Bob Trotter, he always sends his compliments to the chef. You didn't know that, did you, Bob Trotter? But those who inhabit the criminal underworld are not noted for their good manners. The boy remained silent. Cook! The trunch bull shouted, turning her head toward the kitchen door. Come here, cook! Bob Trotter wishes to tell you how good that your chocolate cake is. The cook was a tall, shriveled female who looked as though all of her body juices had been dried out of her long ago in a hot oven. She walked onto the platform wearing a dirty white apron, and her entrance had cleverly been arranged beforehand by the head mistress. Now then, the bog trotter, the trunch bull boom, tell the cook what you think of her chocolate cake. Very good, mumbled the boy. Well, you could see he was now beginning to wonder what was all leading this, what was all leading up to all this. I mean, the only thing that he knew from certain was that the law forbid the trunch bull to hit him with that riding crop, and that she kept smacking against her thighs. That was some comfort, but not much because the trunch bull was totally unpredictable, and one never knew what she was going to do. There you are, cook! The trunch bull cried, Bob Trotter likes your cake. He adores your cake. Do you have any more of your cake that you would like to give him? Here she is. Oh, and she had that sword looking thing in her hand and oh, terrifying these children. I do indeed, the cook said. She seemed to have learnt her lines, learnt her lines by heart. Then go and get it and bring a knife to cut it with. The cook disappeared and almost at once she was back again, staggering under the weight of an enormous round chocolate cake on a china platter. And the cake was fully 18 inches in diameter and it was covered with dark brown chocolate icing. Put it on the table, the trunch bull said. 
There was a small table center stage with a chair behind it, and the cook placed the cake carefully on the table. Sit down, Bob Trotter. The truck bull said, sit there. The boy, he moved cautiously to the table and sat down. He stared at that gigantic cake. Here's a picture of it. Here's a picture of this gigantic cake in that little woman that cooked the cake. There you are, Bob Trotter, the trunk will said, and once again her voice became soft and persuasive, even gentle. It's all for you. Every bit of it, it's all for you. Oh, if you enjoyed that slice you had yesterday so very much, I ordered the cake, the cook to bake you an extra large one, all for yourself. Well, thank you. The boy said, totally bemused. Thank you. Not thank you. Thank cook. Not me. The trunch bull said, thank you, cook. The boy said. The cook stood there like a shriveled boot lace, tight lipped, implacable, disapproving. She looked as though her mouth was full of lemon juice. Come on then, the trunch bull said. Why don't you cut yourself a nice thick slice and try? What? Now? The boy said cautious. He knew there was a catch to this somewhere, but he wasn't sure where. Well, can I just take it home instead? He asked. Oh, that would be impolite, the trunch bull said with a crafty grin. Now, you must show the cookie here how grateful you are for all the trouble that she has taken to make you this cake. The boy didn't move. Well, go on with it, the trunch bull said. Cut a slice and taste it. We haven't got all day. The boy picked up a knife and he was about to cut the cake when he stopped. He stared at the cake and then he looked up at the trunch bull and the tall, stringy cook with her lemony, juicy mouth. All the children in the hall were watching tensely, waiting for something to happen. And they felt certain that it must. The trunch bull was not a person who would give someone a whole chocolate cake to eat just out of kindness. I mean, many were guessing that it had been filled with peppers or castor oil or some other foul tasting substance that would make that boy violently sick. It might even be arsenic. And he would be dead in 10 seconds flat. Ooh. Or perhaps it was a bloody trap inside a trapped inside the cake and the whole thing would blow up in the moment that it was cut, taking these brutes and broad uh, trotter with it. No one in the school put it past the trunch bull, so do any, to do any of these things, they just didn't trust her at all. I don't want to eat it, the boy said. Taste it, you little brat, the trunch bull said. You're insulting the cook. Well, very gingerly, the boy began to cut a thin slice of the vast cake, and then he levered the slice out, and then he put down the knife, and he took that sticky thing in his fingers, and he started very slowly to eat it. And then, he said, very good, the boy said, chewing and swallowing. He finished the slice. Have another, the trunch bull said. Well, that's enough, thank you, the boy member. I said have another, the trunch bull said, and now there was an altogether sharper edge to her voice. Eat another slice. Do as you are told. Well, I don't want another slice, the boy said, and suddenly the trunch bull exploded. Eat! She shouted, banging her thigh with that riding crop. If I tell you to eat, you wanted that cake, you stole that cake, and now you're right, you've got your cake. What's more, you're going to eat it. You do not leave this platform, and nobody leaves this hall until you have eaten the entire cake. That is sitting there in front of you. Do I make myself clear? Bob Trotter. Do you get my meaning?
The boy looked at the trunch bull, and then he looked down at that enormous cake. Eight, 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 the trunch bull was yelling very slowly. The boy cut himself another slice, and he began to eat. Matilda was fascinated. Do you think that he can do it? She whispered to Lavender. Oh, no, Lavender whispered back. It's impossible. He'd be sick before he was halfway through it. The boy kept going. And when he had finished the second slice, he looked at the trunch bull hesitating. Eat, she shouted. Greedy little thieves who like to eat cake must have cake. Eat faster, boy. Eat faster. We don't want to be here all day. And don't you stop like you're doing now. You Next time you stop before it's all finished, you'll go straight into the trunk and I shall lock that door and throw away the key. I'll throw it all the way down the well. The boy cut a third slice and he started to eat it. And he finished this one quicker than the other two. And then when he was done, he immediately picked up the knife and he cut the next slice. And in some peculiar way, he seemed to be getting into the stride. Matilda watched closely. She saw no signs of distress in the boy yet. And if anything, he seemed to be gathering confidence as he was uh, went along. He's doing well, she whispered to Lavender. He'll be sick soon, Lavender whispered back. It's going to be horrible. When Bruce Broad Trotter had eaten his way halfway through that entire enormous cake, he paused for just a couple of seconds and took several deep breaths. Trunchbull stood with her hands on her hips, glaring at him. Get on with it, she shouted. Eat it up! Suddenly, the boy let a gigantic bell, which rolled across the assembly hall like thunder. Many of the audience began to giggle. <laughs> Silence! shouted the Trunchbull. And here he is. You can see it, the picture there. It's the... Well, boys and girls in the audience, and there he is eating that big, enormous cake. And he has to eat the whole thing. Poor boy. I don't think I would have done that. The boy cut himself another thick slice and started eating it fast. And there were still no signs of flagging or giving up. He certainly did not look as though he was about to stop and cry or anything. I can't. I can't eat anymore. I'm going to be sick. He was still in the, uh, still in there running. And now a subtle change was going over the 250 children watching in the audience. Earlier on, they had sensed impending disaster. They had prepared themselves for an unpleasant scene in which the wretched boy suffered to the gills and with chocolate cake would have to surrender and beg for mercy. And then they would have watched the triumph. Trunchbull forcing more and still more cake into the mouth of the gasping boy. Not a bit of it, Bruce Bog Proctor was three quarters of the way through and still going strong in one sense that he was almost beginning to enjoy himself. He had a mountain to climb and he was jolly well going to reach the top or die in the attempt. Well, what is more, he had now become very conscious and of the audience and of how that they were all silently rooting for him and there was nothing less than a battle between him and the mighty trunch bull and suddenly someone shouted come on Bruce you can make it and then the trunch bull wheeled uh, around and yelled silence the audience watched intently and they were thoroughly caught up in the contest and they were longing to start cheering but they didn't dare I think we can make it until the whisper I think so too, Lavender whispered back. Oh, I wouldn't have it believed this for anything in the world that he could eat that whole cake of that size. He did. Well, the trunch fooled she doesn't believe it either. Matilda whispered. Oh, look at her. She's turning redder and redder. She's going to kill him if he wins. And she didn't want him to lose and she didn't want him to win. You couldn't do anything right for her. The boy was slowing down, though. Oh, there was no doubt about that. But he kept pushing. He kept pushing the stuff into his mouth. And the dog in pre uh, pre uh, of a long-distance runner. Oh, as sigh as he finished lungs and knows that he must keep going. 
at the very last mouthful disappeared a tremendous cheer rose up from the audience yay Yay! and uh the children were leaping up to their chairs and yelling and clapping and shouting well done bruce well done for you bruce you've won a gold medal bruce yay and here they are they're all so happy he ate the whole cake <laughs> <gasps> the trunch bull stood motionless, look at it, motionless on the platform and her great horsey face had turned the color of molten lava and her eyes were glittering with fury. She glared at Bruce Bog Trotter who was sitting in his chair like some huge overstepped grub, uh, unable to move or to speak. Sweat was beating his forehead, but there was a grin of triumph on his face. Suddenly, the trunch bull lunged forward and grabbed that large, empty china platter on which the cake had rested, and she raised it high. Look at her. She raised it. She's got the platter. She raised it high up in the air, and with a crash right on top of the wretched Bruce Bogtrotter's head and pieces flew all over the platform. Boy, it was by now so full of cake, he was like a sack full of wet cement, and you couldn't have heard him with a sledgehammer. Oh, he just simply shook his head and held head a few times and went on grinning. He was like, <laughs> Go to blazes, screamed the trunch bull, and she marched off that platform, followed closely by the cook. Now, that's the end of chapter 11. So, what happened? She made that poor Bruce eat that entire cake. She wanted him to, but she didn't think he could. So, she just wanted to to uh, entice him to do that. And then she was going to put him in the chokey or somewhere. She wanted to punish him even further. But he ate it. He did it. So, you know, that was a victory for the, the students, wasn't it? He ate the cake. Well, our next chapter is entitled Lavender. And I will come back and read that later. It's going to be chapter 12. So we're moving on up. And actually, we'll be over halfway finished with our book. Remember, it's worth six points. You may test on it when I'm done. And I hope that every one of you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. I will post it to YouTube. Remember to comment. Thank you. Goodbye.